So while the whole camera world debates whether or not 4K or 8K or 6K is the perfect resolution to be editing on, Blackmagic says, hold my batteries, we got 12K. Yeah, so if you're late to the party here, Blackmagic released a 12K camera and they put six clips online for all of us to download and savor over. So that's what I did and I wanna find out two things in this video. One, I wanna check out the footage they got Gen 5 color science, a whole new sensor. And secondly, I got the new 2019 Mac Pro base model. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. Put a ton of work into it. Uh, and I want to see how 12K footage handles on this machine with not much added to it. Again, bone stock Mac Pro, but still it should do okay. We'll see. Uh, B-Raw's amazing codec. Uh, so if I bring up the files, I have... DaVinci set up here, but before we jump into that, uh, here we have the six different clips. And as you can see, if I just open up one of them, uh, hopefully it's not choppy for you. Um, sometimes QuickTime screen recording can be a little choppy, but on my end, this is perfectly smooth. By the way, thank you Blackmagic for actually giving like test footage that really kind of pushes the limit of a sensor. Cause like one of these clips like this one, for example, it's a nice clip, it's perfectly fine, but it's just like, you know, a model on an overcast day. Like this borderline looks the same as any $1,200 camera out there. So that's not as impressive to me as something like this. The other nice thing is even though that clip is only about 10 seconds, uh, it's also just over a gig in size. So if the data rates were consistent, that'd be about six gigs a minute, which in the cinema world, honestly, I thought it'd be a lot more for 12K. So I ain't mad. All right, we got our Resolve project set up here. If I go into project settings, we can see that we have a custom timeline of 12,228 pixels by 6,480 pixels. That is redonkulous, but that is indeed the native resolution for these 12K clips. Let's pull one in to the timeline here. All right, so right now I am concerned because my RAM usage is already up to 17.76 gigs for Resolve and this computer only has 32 gigs. Uh, it's probably because we're doing a combination of screen recording as well as pulling this stuff in. So let's see if Clean My Max can free some of that up. All right, so hopefully this doesn't fill up my RAM and cause everything to crash. All right, let's see playback here. Press play and nothing's happening. Oh, there it goes, half a frame. All right, so clearly uh, full resolution playback, not a thing. Let's go to proxy mode, quarter resolution. And would you look at that perfect playback. Good job, Mac Pro. Uh, damn, B-Raw is such a good codec. I'm, I'm honestly kind of shocked. I really thought I was gonna have to do full-on optimized media and proxies and all that stuff. I'm sure we'll get there with a light color grade on it, but for just the raw footage, you can fully play it back. We got a solid 24 up here, no stuttering whatsoever. So let's go to the color page and see how it does. In our color page here, gonna pop up our scopes. We're also going to apply this good old saved node tree. Shout out to FCM Wakazi uh, Colors Masterclass. Moving on, we go into color space transform. All right, and here are all my settings for the CST. Now we're gonna head back to primaries and so that I don't bore you to death, we're just going to commence a time-lapse. Now I wanna interject real quick in here that as I'm going through the different uh, color options and going through like pulling the skin tones here, uh, it's really important that none of this is lagging bad at all. The worst thing that you can do is if you're messing with sliders and doing a bunch of different stuff that you have to wait five seconds for the changes to take effect. So as I'm, you know, moving this saturation slider around, it's actually updating uh, very responsiveness, however you want to call it. All right, so now that we got a decent little color correction here. I'm going to go ahead and apply LUT and show you all uh, the best thing you can do with LUTs. Ooh, because that looks ugly. Here's what you want to do if you're using LUTs. 
go to wherever the output or intensity, depending on the program you're in, turn it all the way off and then slowly, gradually enter it back in. You rarely, rarely, rarely want to use 100% uh, intensity of any LUT. Personally, I'm feeling right around here, right around 42% intensity. And so I like this. I'm going to turn off the sharpening and auto grain in here because I don't think we need to sharpen 12K footage already. But let's head back to the edit page and see how it does. All right, so we're back on the edit page here. Let's check our playback again. We're still in quarter resolution. Do you think we can get playback on this? Oh my goodness. Stuttered for like a quarter of a second in the beginning, but this is smooth playback. I on, I'm, I'm honestly surprised by this. A full, I have my full grade on here. You know, I did forget to do one thing in the grade that I could use slightly. I don't think it's gonna change much of the outcome, but just needs a little bit more dynamic. Ready for this, ready for this. Boom, nothing crazy, nothing crazy. Bring it back, do a little S. Yes. Yeah, how much more dynamic that is. Let's play back, yep, we're still solid 24. All right, now I know what's gonna cause this thing to hiccup, and that is going to be as soon as we add noise reduction, my computer is going to cry. Okay, about 12 frames. It's playing back in basically slow motion. So the good thing about that is we could easily set up proxies um, and optimize media and we can get this thing to play back in the project settings. I said to ProRes 4422 proxies. Uh, the only reason I'm not going to do that is because I just tried about three times and this is like my third time recording this little bit here. Um, and so I don't know if it's screen recording and trying to do this. I just don't have enough RAM in the computer. So that needs to be added. And honestly, I don't want to take a ton of your time going through the same six clips is all going to breed pretty much the same results because it's not necessarily what's in the clip. Of course, the color grade may change, um, how much computing power that specific clip takes up, but all these are gonna be roughly the same. So I encourage you to go download the footage, play around with it for yourself, and I would love to know what computers you have. Can you get it to run? It just shows how good of uh, a codec B-RAW is, kind of like how Apple controls the whole ecosystem. Blackmagic Design makes the camera, makes the sensor, makes the codec, and makes the uh, software DaVinci Resolve. So the only thing they don't control is the computer, but they have a pretty uh, good grasp on the entire pipeline so they can make footage that is smaller better and runs very efficiently I thought this was gonna be like a joke video where I just like open resolve import 12k footage and then everything just crashes and if everyone had to own a beefed up version of one of these then that'd be kind of useless but uh yeah so Ursa Mini Pro 12k runs very well and that's it for now guys if you have any questions about the camera black magic just run to resolve let me know down in the comments below I'll have a bunch of resources in the description for you to check out everything from the LUT packs I use LUTify me awesome and if you use the link in the description i get a small kickback so thank you all who have purchased through me in addition to that you'll find the links for all this footage so yeah thanks so much for watching guys see you in the next video